If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, Hello, everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss... And probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on... Yep. One of our favorite subjects. Murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects? Baking. And killers. Hey, sugar. Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm going to cook a, a little pound cake today. Oh, my God. I love pound cake. What I, kind of pound cake is so it? So, this is a chocolate chip pound cake. Oh, my gosh. I know. Um, it's so good, but it's so easy. It's not your traditional southern smack you in the mouth. I need a pound of butter pound cake. Yeah, but we don't tell people those things. When we take them to their house, we act like we're exhausted from exhausted. all the hours of butter churning that we've been but doing. All that butter we churn <laughs> just for your cake. Yeah, and then we act like, whoo, Lord, I'm going to have to sit up spell and lay on the fainting couch before I can go any further. You know, please cut me a slice of that cake. I'll have, and it's still warm, so you might as well share it now. Yep, so this is actually a recipe that we've had for a long time that um, you use a boxed cake mix. Uh, we use the Duncan Hines butter recipe. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't use any other because, I don't know, I just wouldn't. It, that's what works and it it's tastes the secret. great. And then you use some, um, a small box of the Jello Instant Vanilla Pudding and some sour cream, some oil, some eggs, and uh, you mix it all together, put it in a buttered flour pan, um, but you fold in chocolate chips at the end, and then you put it in your buttered, floured, bunt pan. Mm -hmm. um, it cooks for about an hour or so. So I like recipes like that because then I can take a load off while it's cooking. Heck yeah, I read a People Magazine. Model. Exactly. So that's, that's what awesome. we're cooking up today. It that sounds uh, yummy, and I'm ready for you to get to going. I'm going. Let's go. What kind of and murder do you want to talk to be? Do you have a murder? I have a murder. I have a murder. And it's actually one that hails from Ireland. Oh, Ireland. So. Top of the morning to you. Oh, and a happy St. Patty's Day to you as well. No, yeah, that we're didn't... nailing it. We're nailing those <laughs> accents. Yeah. I... That's Southern Ireland. Southern <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> That's from Southern Ireland, and I don't know the Northern Ireland one. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure people would think you were a native if you went there. Absolutely. You, you, you skies? You skies. You skies here in Ireland? <laughs> oh, Ireland. That's Ireland. 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 That's more Ireland. southern. Yeah, <laughs> that's more the south. I would say that's country Ireland. I think the only way we're really going to be able to pick it up and figure it out is to go. <gasps> we need to visit. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> Air trip. All right, let's talk about that murder you got going on in okay. Ireland. In Ireland. So it's actually happening in South Dublin. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the mole halls. The mole halls. Mole halls. Not the mole hills. No. The mole halls. Mole. 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 Like is in mulled wine? A little bit like that. Or my yes. dog mulled you? No, no, that's, no. no that's, that's not mold. it. That's mulled. Right, This mold. is mulled, like mulled wine. Okay. And hall, like deck the halls. Deck the halls. Okay. So they're from Kilclare Gardens in South Dublin. It sounds serene. They just have the best names there. I, I love it. So there's some parents there named John and Kathleen. Okay. 
they have three boys and three girls, a good Irish Catholic family that does not use birth control. Okay. Three boys, three girls. So allegedly, John abused Kathleen in their marriage, and their marriage broke down, and John moved out of the family home and took some kids with him. I don't know Just who some. got to pick. Look, I'd be like, I'll take some kids, but I get to hand pick the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be staying here with the bad kids. So he took some of the kids with him. And then Kathleen ended up starting up a relationship with a man named Farah. His name was Farah Swalla. Not Swalla, no. but <laughs> Swalla. Swalla. Swalla Noor was his last name. <laughs> So, that was his middle name. It's S-W-A-L-E-H. Okay. Swalla. I don't know. I, mean, I don't even know what to do with that name. Is that a real name? Farah Noor. We're going to Farah S. Noor if we need to. In, no, we, we don't. Just, okay. We uh, don't. Let's just don't talk about that name. <laughs> After a year, Kathleen and her new lover, Farah. Her moved, lover. That's lover. my lover. They moved to Cork. And John and his, the children that he had, moved back into the family home. I have a feeling that they didn't get divorced because they were Catholic. They just went out and boinked all the people that they needed to boink and just didn't live together. They that's, love us. That's my assessment. So, um, so John and his and his kids moved back into the home. And three years later, Kathleen and her lover, Farah returned to Dublin. Allegedly, Kathleen also suffered um, abuse by Farah. So, we're going to talk about daughter number one. Her name is Linda. Linda. At the time, um, at the time of the event, which I am going to describe, daughter Linda was unemployed. She had left school early, like she had left high school early oh, no. to produce and raise four children of her own. And when the relationship with the father of her children broke up, she got into a relationship with this dude named Wayne who abused her children from her previous relationship. And he, that guy Wayne ended up going to prison and serving six years for the abuse. This, this was a bad dude. She did not have, um, I just don't feel like Linda had real good luck with men I feel like she maybe wasn't didn't have a good picker. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have a good man picker. So um, happens to the best of us. I know. So that guy went to prison and ended up stabbing somebody after he got out of prison and went back to prison for life. So that guy's off our radar. Wayne, we, we've talked about you. Now you're out of the story. Goodbye. Okay. Daughter number two is Charlotte. She's nine years younger than Linda. Ah, oh, that's a big gap. Yeah. She, like her sister, had some alcohol addictions. She had some drug issues. She was a petty criminal, and at times she worked as a worker in the sex industry. Oh, Charlotte. I mean, it, it happens. It happens. It just It's just one of those ugly sides of life. So both girls had stayed with their mom, and... Like when the mom and the dad split, they right. were two of the girl, two of the kids that must have been the bad kids got <laughs> left behind. So they stayed with their mom, and I guess they had a pretty tough upbringing because um, I don't think the mom was born with a good man picker either. And so this fair guy must not have been, you know, a real easy guy to live with. So let's talk about Farah. Farah S. Noor. Farah. All right. He was born in 1965. I'm familiar with that year. <laughs> He's from Kenya originally. He arrived in Ireland in 96 and at the time claimed to be Somali. Oh. And said his family name was Shalila Salim. <laughs> well, I mean, I make the names easy for word you. Word salad. <laughs> I already oh. have a hard enough time and now it's the word salad. Oh, look, there's Trout oh, making yes. his cameo appearance yes. as he does every single podcast. So I don't Trout understand. is my dog. Yes. He is he, a little 14 pound vicious rat terrier rat. mix that gets so far underneath my sister Karen's skin, <laughs> she can't hardly see straight. Well, I mean, the dog and I just don't see eye to eye on good behavior. That is for sure. 
He gets so, a little intimidated by anybody who's standing in the house and not paying attention to him. Which I need to not do that. So. <laughs> All right. Sorry to interrupt. Back to the podcast. No problem. Okay. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by your dog. <laughs> so, uh, this dude, Farah says that he is from Mogadishu and said his family had been killed there in the Civil War. Wiped out. Oh. Authorities discover that he is actually um, Farah Swala Noor. And he is Somali, but he's from Kenya. And his family is, in fact, alive and kicking. Oh, man. So they're <laughs> like, something is squirrely here. We're going to have to deport you. But he appealed it and was eventually granted Irish citizenship. And let me show, let me tell you how this happened, because this, to me, is ridiculous. So, as he's out on, a, as he's appealing his citizenship and, and waiting around to see if they'll keep him or kick him out, um, he actually fathers an Irish-born child, which means that the child was born on Irish soil. All right. So, um, he's also racking up some criminal behavior like public intoxication, which I'm thinking that's just a typical Sunday out in Ireland. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not saying all the people there are drunks, but I think it's like pretty much a place where people might drink and have a good time on a daily basis. Uh, yeah. I mean, and so, typical, typical Wednesday afternoon. Absolutely. So, he also... Gets a little abusive with some people. He threatens some people. And then in 97, he actually raped a mentally disabled 16-year-old Chinese girl. What? She later gave birth to a son. That's how he got his citizenship. Because he had fathered a child on Irish soil. That's zany. Wow. That's Just the kind of citizen we want, right? Exactly. Hey, you Turns committed out. all these crimes. Yeah. Oh, my God. And you raped a woman and had a baby. Keeper. You're in. Yeah. So we'll take you. He also fathered two children with, or children with two other women, who also later reported that those pregnancies were products of rape. Oh. So he's he got a little bit of an M.O. his thing in his pants. Yeah. Keep that willy in your... Wonka. So, anyway, <laughs> so, he was convicted on three occasions of rape, but he never served jail time. Really? Like, what is happening over there? Who's paying attention? Right. I feel like maybe nobody. Nobody's paying attention. That's who. Somebody wake up. So, he bounces around Ireland, and he finally meets up with good old Kathleen, and they settle into Dublin in a flat that she had rented. So, it... We come to St. Patty's Day. Okay. And that's a national holiday in Ireland. I can imagine. It's a bank holiday. Oh, schools are closed. Banks are closed. I don't know what kind of postal delivery service they have there, but I'm sure that wasn't working either. So, um, I mean, what else do does a family do in Ireland on St. Patty's Day? They go out a drinking. A partay. Yes. So, I mean, how else are you going to meet up with a leprechaun if you don't drink in the streets? I mean, come so on. Anyway, and we know... On on St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, the streets are paved in gold. The water flows green. Oh, and the the sky is green. The sky is there green. There are rainbows everywhere. Like it's like the Lucky Charms double rainbow. Like yeah. Well, I, you know how the Lucky Charms they the little marshmallows spin in the air. Yeah. I think it's everywhere. And it's all magically delicious. Yes. And I think everybody gets up and has Baileys. The children have Baileys in their bottles. The shortbread is made with Baileys that day. Maybe I think, a little. Jameson Irish whiskey. Oh, gosh. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Irish coffee for everyone. Everyone. And green mm -hmm. beer. Let's don't forget the green beer. Oh, my beer. God. Think about what that sewage system looks two days later. <laughs> <laughs> That's when everything turns green. Oh. So, anyway, Kathleen and Farah end up in a flat, and they're out partying on this national holiday, St. Patty's Day. And they're with her two kids, her two daughters, Linda and Charlotte. Okay. Everybody is out and about, and um, family fun day. They're out partying it up with some vodka. Oh, vodka! Yeah, because it's made with potatoes. potatoes. And everybody thinks vodka is Russian. I don't think so. I think vodka is definitely <laughs> Irish because it's made with potatoes. Yes, it's some taters in there. So anyway. They're out partying, and um, Linda and Charlotte decide 
I mean, just like, just like mothers and daughters do, they also enjoy some ecstasy pills together. Oh, no. <laughs> Because oh. that's what you do. Really? Well, that's what bonds you as a, as a family, I guess. Okay. So, and they think it's really funny that they crush up and spike Farah's vodka drink with a little ecstasy. Oh, now yeah. that's a great plan. Yeah. Let's give the rapist some ecstasy and Let's see what happens. Let's give the dude who can't keep his willy in his pants <laughs> some ecstasy. So, what is he going to want to do? He's going to want to love on everybody. Yeah. That's so, good. Good, good thought, Everybody going to get a little piece of fur <laughs> Good thinking. So they end up going back to the flat where everybody is drunk or high or both, and they party it up. And, I mean, Farrah makes a sexual pass at Kathleen's daughter, Linda. Oh, well, that's to be expected. <laughs> I know. So, Trout, you are going to drive me to drinking some potato vodka. Oh, no. Come here, Trout. So Farrah... Um, Gets quite aggressive with Linda, and this pisses off Kathleen because she is a mom. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And there's a verbal altercation that starts up, and supposedly Farah gets a little aggressive as well. Oh. And so Kathleen blurts out to her daughters, just killing for me. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yes. So, I mean, what would any good daughter do? She picks up a Stanley knife, and let me tell you what a Stan. Do you know what a Stanley knife is? Uh, no, only what a Stanley steamer is, and I don't think it's the same thing. <laughs> I don't think she hit him with the Stanley steamer. No, this is uh, one of those big utility box cutters that okay. people use in warehouses. I don't know why it's just laying about in Kathleen's apartment. Really? Because if it were me, I'd be like, box cutter. Okay, I got to go in the closet, get the toolbox, open it. I got to get it open. I got to go to the bottom shelf of the toolbox, and then I got to dig through that pull up a rusty old box cutter and then you know it's not going to it's going to be dull i'm going to need a new blade right. or it's going to be broken or the i'm going to be going to be missing exa or the little handle thing that pushes it up isn't going to work and i'll be like please hold got to run to ace got to get my box cutter then i come back i have to take scissors and get it out of that packaging cuz you know it's got all those that packaging around it because it's safe. And then I'll be like, now I got it. Now what were we doing? <laughs> what was I doing? Yeah, okay. So anyway, <laughs> she picks up this Stanley knife laying about, and she slices Farrah's throat. Well, for the love of Pete. And Patty. <laughs> yes. So, and then Charlotte picks up a hammer and hits him in the head several times. Okay. So, Kathleen, because, of course, when you go to get your Stanley knife, you're going to just make sure your hammer is close by. It's laying about. Yeah. It's laying about. you got to use the tools at hand. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, Kathleen watches this, but does not participate. No, because why, why would she get her hands dirty? That's why you have children. Right. Because when they get grown, <laughs> you make them do your heavy lifting. Well, sure. That's what they're for. Duh. Okay. So... He ends up getting stabbed at least 20 times. Oh. 27 to be more exact because so I can't read. Got a little it's anger. 27. A little anger issue Seems happening. like they got to going on something and just committed. Couldn't stop. They were very committed stop. to it. So I don't know how long it takes to stab and slice somebody 27 <laughs> times, but I would imagine at some point I got to change hands. I mean, you have to really make a commitment if that's what you're going to yeah. do. And I mean, it's a good workout. Yeah. It's great a good workout. Great for the arms. So. Once he's dead, they got to get rid of the body. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, again, you have to use the tools in hand. So, they take him into the bathtub. They drag him in there. Okay. Teamwork. They use the Stanley knife and that hammer, and they take that man's head off. Lord have mercy. How <laughs> in God's name? I'm serious. This thing must be enormous, this Stanley knife. I don't think it's that enormous, and I don't think its head is that little. I think it took a long time. Holy cow. And I'm telling you, these are committed girls. She raised them right. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, you got to cut through bone and uh, cartilage ew, and muscle. Cartilage, ew. Right. Yeah, and at some point... When do you not get grossed out and say, I can't do this? No. What am I doing? Yeah. Well, that didn't happen. So anyway, they take off his head. Maybe after they took off his head, they were like, oh, no. No, I can't no. Do no, no, no. They take off his head. Okay. They talk off, take off his arms. Okay. They take off his legs. Right. And they sliced off his penis. Oh, dear God. <laughs> they sliced off the willy. Yeah. Willy's sliced not it right off. Now, that's got to probably be the quickest one to slice off because like it's butter. like. <laughs> well, I don't know about butter, but I'm thinking at least it'd be like a hot dog. <laughs> I'm saying.
saying, just like a hot dog. <laughs> so they take off his pinnace and they try to use the towels that they have to catch the flow of the river of blood oh, running wow. around their apartment. Yeah, that makes sense. But I guess they didn't do a good job. They place the body parts in trash bags and they put the head in a sports duffel bag. Okay. All right. Not all right. Not all right. I don't know why they would have done that, but okay. Well, I guess they ran out of trash bags. Well, that happens. I know. Can you when imagine? You're low, if it's not, I wish I had gotten trash bags at the from store from Costco and not from Publix right. or Target, where I got the cheap ones that are just like yes. the twenty in the roll. I had no. The I store wasn't. Store brand. I didn't know. No. I didn't know. I need Force Flex hefty bags. Yeah. And um, I need a gracious plenty of them. You need to buy the super big pack, and they need to be on hand at all times. I'm saying I need a spool. Just a spool. I need a big spool of them. <laughs> Can you buy it in a spool? I'm I need that sure. in spool size, please. Does that come in a spool size? <laughs> so anyway, they put his body parts in trash bags. They put his head in a sports bag because that's what those are for. <laughs> it took several hours, and they take several trips to this very scenic part out at this place called the Royal Canal. Okay. So when I think of the, a Royal Canal, I think of like... You know, people out in this park with maybe the willow trees hanging over the water, and it's scenic, and it's probably got some swans, and there's some butterflies, maybe people, a couple, like in a rowboat, and they're kissing. And, and people dumping plastic bags and they're, in the water. they're dumping body parts. They're out dumping body parts. Well, and you know, it's got to be, you know, the dead of night by now. Cause probably, or the wee, party, hours of, the wee hours the wee of the, hours the next morning. morning. But I gotta tell you, some, don't you think somebody saw him? But it was St. Patrick's Day, so they're probably all drunk. Going, did I just? Did I just did see? I no, see that Linda wasn't with a trap. No. no, did she have a leprechaun in did that trash bag? No, was no, that. So anyway, they dump everything into the water except the head. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the pinnace. Oh, I don't even know where the pinnace is at this point. <laughs> so. They decide not to throw it into the canal, and instead, they get up the next day, and oh, they wait, take that wait, <laughs> wait. No, no, I'm just saying. Come on. They get up the next day, they got the head in the duffel bag, and what does any <laughs> other mother-daughter trio do? They go shopping. Oh, my God. They go they to They slept <laughs> in the same flat with the head, and First now First of all, I'm shopping. saying maybe, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure if a lot of people have cars over in Ireland. I'm thinking they didn't. Right. So I'm thinking they probably slept with it. And then they took it shopping. And it's like this open air, like a sh not a shopping mall that's enclosed, but like a shopping, I would say, plaza. A plaza. Like an outdoor kind of a plaza. Well, that makes sense because I would imagine Don't there's you like think a that very strong smell of iron, like from the blood maybe? I, well, first of all, it's the after St. Patty's clearance sales. And you got to go get your after St. Patty's right, Day clearance right, sales. Right, because if it's like our after Christmas, things exactly. are more price, sometimes 75% off. You they have can to go, go as low as 90% off of something. Yeah. I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to. So they go out shopping with the head. I guess okay. nobody says, hey, what's in your duffel bag? I mean, what that's dripping blood and smells a little a foul. A little foul. <laughs> so, here's an odd. You got a basketball <laughs> for Saint Patrick's an Day. Odd shape. So there's a evidently there's some kind of a park near the shopping center that they walk to, and that's where Charlotte digs a hole with a knife. She is talented with wow. a knife. Wow. With she, a knife. They should have called her like. Jinsu. What are those knives oh, that you right, get on right. Ask on TV? <laughs> right. That's what her nickname should be. Jinsu. Jinsu. So she. Wow. I mean, because that's. Why commitment. don't take you a shovel? Gotta, that's take a, a double shovel. bag, and it's got to be as wide as a head, and you got to go a little deep, right? You can't just do it uh, at the surface. I'm assuming. With, oh, wow. With a knife. Yeah. Again, this shows commitment Very on her committed. part. Yeah. I mean, resume builder. Yeah. Resume builder. No right there. Trout, I'm ignoring you. Yeah. So. Anyway, they bury the head, and then they throw all their tools in a nearby pond. Okay? Yeah. So it seems like, this is good. We're done. We can go back to our lives. No. A few, day, a few days later, for whatever reason, Linda uh, goes back to where the head is buried. Damn it, Linda. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Linda, listen. <laughs> listen, Linda. Let it go, Linda. 
So she goes back and unburies the head and sticks it in her son's school backpack. Well, that makes perfect sense. I guess they were still out of school from St. Patrick's Day. I guess so. And the duffel bag's dirty, maybe even a little drippy, perhaps a little buggy. And smelly. And a little smelly. So she has to unzip this duffel bag Ugh. and grab a hold of that man's head, mm. bring it up with her hands, and stuff it into her son's zip bag and or book bag and zip it up. Ken, Who? where are all the people at the park? I don't know. Yeah, we're not hitting any parks if we go to Ireland. Oh God, I'm not going. I'm no, not. not I don't there. think I can go now because I'm not go. sure what's happening. You can go. Just don't go to the parks. Oh, okay, I'm not going to any parks. No parks. No parks and no open air shopping. No, kind of. Because there could be somebody walking around with a head and you don't know <laughs> you it. Don't and you accidentally know. bump into them, you get blood on your khaki pants and it's not coming out. Oh my gosh, we would just be screaming. I'd be we? so mad. I'd be like, I don't know what's in that duffel bag, but you got some kind of a stain up on my khakis. Well, listen, <laughs> the thing of it is you and I wouldn't even notice until we got back to the hotel. No, and I'd be walking around. People are like, oh, that American with the smudge on her right. pants. Yeah, and they're thinking I got dookie on my pants. <laughs> and I don't. It's somebody's blood. Somebody's bloody right. head has rubbed up against my leg yeah. and open air. It's not. No. Mm -mm. Mm. So anyway. Uh, so, okay. So she goes and she, she bar unburies the head. And then she takes it out to some estate somewhere. I'm sure those are, like, abundant because right. it's all, you know, estates everywhere. And she decides to sit down in this field, in this estate, with her trusty hammer that right. I guess she didn't throw that in the pond. Right. And cracks that head into a gazillion pieces. Wow. <clears throat> Right. That's so disgusting. <laughs> right. That's not just a skull. He's still got skin and eyeballs and yeah, shit. Like he got really ears. Pissed. He got like she's mad. She's real mad. And at she's him. having some alone time with that head right she's now. Like, we're gonna come to Jesus right now. <laughs> right now. Right now. You she breaks me, it Ed. apart and then she spreads it all along the field like as if she were planting daisies or something. I don't know. And she leaves it. Wow. I'm going to so, want to know what field that was, because we're definitely not going to want to go there. I'm thinking. I'm, so, yeah, can you imagine I'm in my flip-flops and my toe comes up with an ear on oh it? My like, God. what the hell? <laughs> First, I got a smudge on my khaki pants. I've gone back, <laughs> and I've gotten another pair of pants on, and I'm in my flipper floppers, and now my toe has gotten some kind of an ear stuck on uh, it. I'm not having it. No. I'm not having it. Yeah, I don't see us going to Ireland. Yep. So... Fast forward 10 days later. Okay. Okay. And what do you think is floating in the Royal Canal? Oh, I bet it is his penis. She'll go, it's not his penis. Oh. It's not. Oh. It is one of his legs. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it has worked its way out the, out the, uh, the trash sack. You know, again, cheap ass bags. I'm telling you. You got to buy brand name trash bags if you're going to dispose of body parts. It feel I feels that feels like you're speaking the truth right yeah. now. So his his legs And I would be asking my sister who bagged the legs? Who who bagged the legs? Because I don't think it was I don't me. think it was me. I was in charge of the head. Correct. Yeah. So anyway this leg still had a sock on it. Oh, my God. Did you need to take his socks off? <laughs> well, he probably had gnarly feet. Yeah, I'm thinking they don't get it's a lot of buddies over there. See, right? Yeah, ew, man feet? Oh, no, I don't like a man feet. <laughs> no, there are rules about man feet, and they are to stay covered. Yeah, they should Sorry if there are any men out there with pretty feet that I'm offending. Exactly. But you're a rarity <laughs> if that's the case. Right. So, ew, man feet. So, anyway, he has a sock on it. So... I, I guess what kind the, of sock it was. Like a Jamaican sock. He's not from Jamaica, Shulga. He's from Kenya. Okay. Well, maybe Kenya, the Kenyan Kenya, flag. A Kenyan flag? Yeah. I wonder if they were flip-flop socks like we have. I would love a flip-flop sock. Do too. <laughs> don't even get me started. I like mine have sumo wrestlers on them. That's right. I got them for That's you. That's right. So don't even get me started with a flip-flop sock. Oh, I hear you. So anyway... Um, the, the police send some divers down, and they were able to recover most of his body parts. Most? But, most? Well, I mean, you know, they got to put together a torso, and you got phalanges, and, you know, you right, got right. things. You got things to put together. Of course, they didn't find a head. Right. And unfortunately, they never found his penis. Oh, man. No more penis. That was fish beef. That sure. Willy Wonka. Yeah. <laughs> 
they want <laughs> right out of there. I think somebody found it floating, used it for bait, and caught them a big fish. I think you might be right. Yes. Um, speaking of big fish, your trout dog, your 14-pound <laughs> trout, is driving me insane. He's so climbing up my leg with the toy in his, ha oh, his, in he his mouth. Oh, he wants to play. Sugar, I'm busy. Yes. Mr. Trout, eat that pretzel on the floor. <laughs> Look, there's a treat for you. Okay. Anyway, I can't. I can't. So, the police take the clothing. I guess they never undressed the man. I guess not. Except they undressed him enough to get his willy whacker off of there. I mean, they were busy. You know how long it takes to cut somebody up with a box cutter? Okay, but they got to his willy. Busy. Okay, well, they left some clothing items on there, and evidently they were recognized by a local. Right. If they only talked about his, they probably didn't have any pants on. Why wouldn't he have pants on when he, he didn't drop his drawers to be... To get no, handsy. I'm saying when they found his body parts, he didn't have on pants because it was just leg. You know what? I wonder if he had on some basketball shorts. Oh, maybe. And it was easy to just like cut that willy whacker right off of there, whack the willy off and pull them shorts back up. And then, you know, because like people wear like the slides with the socks and the, oh, it's right. not a good look, but yeah. I'm not saying this was a good dresser either. Well, we're not judging if people And I don't know that. what the dress for St. Patty's Day is. Right. I don't even know if it's cold, hot, you know, short weather. No clue. Don't know. But it, whatever it was, this man, they did not take all of his clothing off. So one of his friends was able to identify his t-shirt. Oh. Well, maybe he was the only one that wore that T-shirt. Or yeah. maybe it was the combination of the sock and the T-shirt together. And he's like, my friend Farah only wears those socks and that T-shirt together. I agree. I'm just saying. Or maybe it was a T-shirt that said, hi, my name is Farah. Oh. Ha! <laughs> Didn't think about that, did you? Man. Yeah. Well, then I would think that the police would know his name was Farah before the guy had to identify him. Well, they had to be sure. Well, you're right. So this guy, whatever, we're getting hung up. But um, this guy was able to say that this is my friend. His name is Farah. He's Somali, and he lives with this woman and her daughters up here in this flat. So Linda, she cracked. Oh, Linda. Cracked like a egg on a hot summer day. I don't know why eggs crack on a hot summer day. They cracked don't. like an egg stepped on with a boot. How's that? Okay. So... She sang like a canary. She did. She did. She called up the police a few weeks after the body was discovered, and she admitted to having some involvement, mm. and she voluntarily went and gave them a recorded statement to the police reciting the events. Right, right. Well, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, she gave up her sister Charlotte and said she killed him. Oh, God. <laughs> what a great sister. I mean, the rule of thumb is the first to talk gets to set the scene. I guess, but I mean... Hey, listen, at this point, I mean, it's everybody, every woman for herself, because I'm just saying, you got to take care. I mean, you got, you just have to, you, if you're going to say the events, you got to say the events. You got to say what happened. You got to come up with the truth. And then the truth was Charlotte started it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, she, um... She told them what happened, and the investigators went up to Kathleen's fleet. Fleet? No, it's not a fleet. It's a flat. <laughs> it's a flat. A fleet flat. To her, her stupid apartment, and they discovered <laughs> lots of blood stains all over the place, and they matched the body. Typical. That, let me just say, typical kids. Yeah. Don't clean up your mess. I'm. I'm thinking they might have been tired, and couldn't the mom do one thing? Really? Wouldn't she? I mean, they're doing everything. Right. I get it. You've got kids; they do the heavy work. But by God, do something. Really? Yeah. So. So anyway, she gets. She gives up her sister and her mom. Well, she doesn't give up her mom. She says, "This is what happened." She says, my mom didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, how nice. And I know. And so, I mean, she's protecting her mom. And so, of course, what does any good mother do? She left and went to England. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm out of here. She's like, uh, peace out, girls. girls. I got to go. <laughs> you figure it out. So, while she's Probably in England. <laughs> yeah. While she's in England, she meets up with a man from Sierra Leone oh. who had previously been convicted of rape. Oh, she's and got she started up a relationship. <laughs> She started up a relationship yeah, with him. She's got Charlene's got a got a type. Well, that her name is Kathleen, and Kathleen. you continuously try to call her by a name that is not hers, and I don't want to piss the woman off. So her name is Kathleen. Sorry, Kathleen. 
Kathleen. Kathleen. Kathleen. So anyway, she has a type. She likes the rapist, and she likes them, I guess, from the continent of Africa. Oh, yeah. So she goes to England, and she stays there, and she's she actually stays there until 2008. So, and then she went, for whatever reason, she decided to go back and give herself up. She was convicted of helping her daughters clean up and get rid of the body. So, she served five years. I have a feeling that she perhaps was summoned back. Mm -mm. You think she voluntarily they woke up one day and said, I'll just go back. They don't have extradition. I didn't say she was extradited. Well, how can they summon her? I think they probably put some pressure on her and said, you need to get your ass back here and take be, be Maybe accountable. Maybe that good, that good man rapist from Sierra Ways. Yes, and you need to do said, the right thing, baby. you got to do the right thing. <laughs> Let me help you with your morals. Right. Yes. So anyway, she goes back. Her, her daughters never testify against her. They never, ever admit to her involvement. But she does get convicted of tampering with the body and cleaning up the stuff or whatever. Wow. So um, they did mention that Kathleen had asked them several times when over the years that she was living with Farah, she had asked them to please kill him for her. Oh. Because she felt like he was so abusive that one day he would eventually cause her death. So she planted the seed there, but that's fine. That's fine. So anyway... In the media, the daughters became known as the Scissor Sisters. The, the Scissor Sisters. Now, I don't recall there being scissors. Do There's you? not. Why not the Stanley I don't Sisters? Know. Well, I would think the Stanley Company would have a little bit of a problem with that. Or the Psycho Sisters. Or the Cut 'em Up Sisters. Cut, cut 'em Up Sisters. Or the Head in the Duffel Bag Sisters. Right. Doesn't have the same. Scary kind. Sisters. Or yeah, but that's too sisters. generic. I think Scissor Sisters, they're just really good at cutting things. Okay. I mean, look at them. They're good. They can even dig a hole with a knife. Like, they can do a lot of things. Right. So, the funny thing is, is there is a band in the UK also called the Scissor Sisters. Oh. <laughs> so, I'm sure they were like, oh, free advertising. Right. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> come to our show. Absolutely. So, these girls were called the Scissor Sisters, but it was not because of their musical talents. It was more of their, I would say, tailoring of dead bodies talents. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So, Charlotte, who was 25 years old at the time, was sentenced to life for murder. Oh, right, right. She went for life. Because she did it. Well, because her sister let everybody know she, she did, did it. it. She started it. Jeez. Mom, she started it. Yeah. So, Linda, who was the older sister, was sentenced to 15 years for manslaughter. Oh. So, I'm thinking they go pretty easy on their ladies. They did go very easy <laughs> on her, especially considering she went back, got the head, I got and then... And I mean, hammered it to death. I think they're okay with that because it was all after the fact. I think that, um, I just think that there are not a lot of women. Well, when I looked on Murderpedia, there's only four women listed as murderers in Ireland, oh. and two of them were these girls. Oh. <laughs> so I don't maybe think it's something that happens very them. often, right. or maybe they just didn't record it in history back then because, I don't know, they respected women. I don't know. I doubt that, but so, okay. Whatever. The crazy thing is that all three of these women ended up in the same prison. Oh, so it's like family again. Yes. Yeah. We are family. family. I got my, oh, sister, my sister's sisters with me. me. And my uh, mom. Uh, 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 and my mom <laughs> who says she didn't do nothing. But that's okay because so, we love her. So we love much. my mom. But then Charlotte ruins it. Damn it, Charlotte. She gets photographed jokingly holding a knife to a male prisoner's throat in a reenactment of the crime. Oh, Charlotte. <laughs> so she's not taking things too seriously. No, she's like, hey, look what I did. But what kind of a prison lets you mingle with the men? Like, what's happening there? How right. many pregnancies are they and having? What was she holding to us? A knife. So how'd she get it? I don't know. Right. I mean, are they letting her go to the ki do kitchen duty? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Hey, let me see your knife. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she just... Happened to see a box cutter and somewhere. She and she said, don't hey. worry about me, because remember, I use scissors. But she didn't use I scissors. Know, but everybody oh. called her the scissors That's sisters. true. That's very true. So anyway, and then Charlotte also got caught having sex with the jail worker in her cell. But, you know, that happens. When you're there for life, you got to pass the time. I mean, yeah. 
You gotta pass the time. Girls gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Well, and then she got transferred to Limerick. Okay, bye. <laughs> so she got separated from her mom and her sister. Probably for the best. So remember the dad, John? I do. The dad that probably originally kicked this whole thing off because yeah. he was abusive to Kathleen and their marriage. And then he only him. took the good kids. Right. I'll yeah. hold him accountable. <laughs> so I'm just saying he might have had something to do with this. Well, let me tell you something about little John. He was so upset when he heard of the conviction of his daughters that he went to a nearby park huh. and hanged himself. God, at the park? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't These know what parks. it is about parks, but I'm, I'm not going to one, no, in, I'm not going to one no in Ireland. Park. I don't know what's going on if in these parks. If there's any sightseeing tour, list something as a park, we're out. <sighs> we're out. I'm not going to a park, and I'm not going to an estate with nope. a field. No. I can't do it. Not doing it. No, and I'm not going to an open-air mart, and no. I'm not going to a Royal Canal. I, there's a lot no. of places I'm not going. No. I'm canceling my trip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm touching down, and I'm leaving. Out, we're out. <laughs> Maybe Scotland is the better place for <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> so anyway, he um he went to the park and hanged himself. I don't know why it had to be the park. I, can you imagine some little kid like kicks the ball and it comes, sir, sir, hey over there, can you throw me my red ball that just rolled over under your feet? And he's like, no, lad, I'm about to hang myself. <laughs> Get your ball and get to getting, because yeah. I'm about to hung myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stringing myself up from this tree, little lad. Can't you see? <laughs> and that's my Southern Ireland accent coming it's out again. Perfect. I know it's good. So anyway, and so then they have this, this brother, James, and mm. he actually got... So he's one of the good guys, right? Nope, because he must have been the one, the third one that stayed with the mom, um. because... <laughs> He actually got convicted of robbing two sex workers, claiming oh. that he was trying to support not only his six children, but also Linda's four that she left behind. Oh, no. So, I mean, good kid, bad kid. Right. He did take in the four kids of his sister. He's trying to provide for them. But just not, not really right in the way. right way. But, I mean, his intentions were there. He right. was trying. So, Linda actually was released from prison in 2013 after serving 12 of her 15 years Seems like she was the model prisoner. So she's still there in Dublin. Well, it just says she was released. I think she's in du Dublin. So we're not going there. No, I'm not going. Mm -mm. I'm not going. And then the mom does this tell-all interview, which I guess, you know, the tabloids just were like, we need to interview this kooky woman. And she revealed that she is dying and needs a lung transplant. Oh. She also reveals that her relationship with her daughter, Linda, is on the rocks. I wonder her, why. Her daughter no longer speaks to her. I wonder why. Because her mama did not do a good job cleaning up. No. <laughs> no. Mama, we did everything else. You couldn't spray some Windex. <laughs> like a what up? What up? So anyway, she they don't have a good relationship, but Charlotte... Being the good kid that she is, right. she has offered up one of her lungs for her mother. That's super sweet. I think it's because she wants to go to the hospital, have some good hospital food, and maybe even do some sex things when she's recovering with oh, one yeah. of the hospital Oh, yeah. And she totally workers. wants the good drugs. Oh, my God. You're so right. She still has a drug problem. Yeah. So, there's been no word to date as if Kathleen and Linda have been able to repair their relationship. But listen... Dr. Phil has got to get them on. He does. I'm surprised. I think he, he can it. fix this. I think he can. I'm going to write to him and say, Dr. Phil, do I have the family for you? Yes. Because then they can also get Charlotte in on like a remote TV kind oh, of a yeah. situation. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. This would be such a good Dr. Phil moment. You're on to something. Dr. Phil moment. Yeah. So, anyway, that is the story of the Scissor Sisters out of Dublin. And the mole halls. Well, that was quite a story. It was quite a story. I so enjoyed it. Me too. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Um, so what's happening with your cake? I got about 30 minutes left on my cake. Oh my gosh. Do yeah. you have a murder? I have a murder. Okay. Well, then let's swing around and I'll stand in the kitchen and watch the cake and take it out and eat it. And then you do your murder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to pause it. I'm just going to walk around because that's what we do. We just walk. Should we... Okay, we're walking, we're walking, we're walking, and, and we're done. Scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's not a very big estate. Oh, well, I thought it took me a long time to get here. I was exhausted. <laughs> All right, so. What are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about Mary Ann Britland, and she is out of Merry Old England. 
very own neck. Yeah. Look at both of us over in the UK. Yeah. We, I, must, we must have the travel bug. We must, but I don't know if I want to go to these places anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Know, I'm tell I mean, my bucket list has, has gotten a big hit. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have to rethink some things. Absolutely. Do some new planning. Anyway. Yes. Marianne um, is married. Aww. She married um, a fellow named Tom Britland. And she's got two beautiful daughters, Elizabeth um, and Susanna. Um, oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Yeah. Okay, so Marianne is a hard worker. She works in a factory by day, and at night she works in a bar. Where the hell is her husband she's that she got to do all this working? I know. I know. Oh, God. Well, this uh, takes place in the 1800s, so let's just remember... I'm saying Tom. She for, just didn't marry well. She did not. I'm sorry. She did not. So she um, and her family decide they're going to move into a rental house. Okay. And uh, she gets to the rental house, and she is very upset because she says that there is a mouse infestation. <gasps> a mouse in the house. There's a mouse in the house. Oh Lordy, get it out! <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> so, uh, she needs something to get rid of this mouse problem that she has. Yeah. It's yeah. called mouse bait. Okay. What's it called? <laughs> well, evidently, it's not something you can just find at the store back in the 1800s. Marianne had to go to a chemist. A chemist? A chemist. Oh. Yes. Hello, Mr. Chemist. She went to the chemist and Hello, she said, governor, I have a chemist. Governor, I have a mouse problem. I mouse. have a mouse upon my house. <laughs> So the chemist says, I've got just the thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> he said it just like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's vermin killer. <laughs> Not vermin killer. <laughs> <laughs> but in order for... We are so good at I mean, voices. I know. Impressions. Yeah. We should totally go because they would not know we were... No, yeah, they'd be like, are you an agent? I'd be like... <laughs> Why, I am, governor. <laughs> governor. <laughs> well, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> so in oh. order for her to get the vermin killer, she had to <laughs> sign a poison register. Oh, Lord. Much like we do today when we want to buy, let's say, Sudafed. Sudafed. Yeah. Right. Oh, my gosh. It's got what's your cold. blood type? What's the name of your firstborn? Who your daddy is? Right. I mean, how your mom and Durin? No, you can't have any Sudafed. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so... Marianne gets this this vermin killer, and she takes it back to her house and lives life, you know, like she should. And lo and behold, her 19-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, um, just up and dies. <gasps> just like that. She just died. She died. Oh, my god! Yeah, of natural causes. I will tell you, back then, I don't think the lifespan was very long. I don't think so either, <laughs> but I think it should have been a little longer than 19. 19. Right. Okay. All right. Because, I mean, I think living back in the 1800s, that was hard stuff, but they didn't know it was hard because they didn't have anything to compare it to. Right. It's very true. Yeah. So They didn't have Michael J. Fox going back to the future to tell them. This is what's going to happen. This is what's happening. Right. Yeah. So, good news. Elizabeth had a 10-pound... Life insurance policy. I thought you were going to say a 10 pound tumor. No, I it's not. I couldn't figure out why no, that was good news. No, <laughs> good news. No. We found 10 pound It's a tumor. tumor. Yeah, and that's the mouse. It's the mouse. <laughs> uh, she had a life insurance policy. Yeah, so, you I don't know. know how much 10 pounds is. What, well, whatever. back then, probably a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right? true. Like at least a $100. Right. Yeah. So that was in March. Okay. Okay. And you know, she's all torn up, sad. She gets the life insurance money. Aww. Super sad. And on in May of that same year, her husband, Tom, he dies. Oh, my god! Yeah, the doctor said it was undiagnosed epilepsy that killed him. Lord, I didn't, can you die from epilepsy? I guess you can die from epilepsy because yeah. he said he died from epilepsy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -mm. So... Thank goodness Tom also had a life insurance policy. Oh, yeah. yeah so she yeah. got all the money from that, too. A little scratch. But then Marianne's Get all the money. Get me through. Poor she, Marianne. Well, she does have a daughter left. She does have a daughter <laughs> left, but you know, I don't know what, what's come of her. Well, perhaps she ran for the hills. She may have. 
<laughs> because she said, there's a mouse in the house and it's killing my peeps. Exactly. And I got to I go. got to go. Right. <laughs> I'm going to Dublin. I'm Dublin. <laughs> I'm going to, oh, to Dublin. no. <laughs> so, um, luckily, she's got some very, very nice neighbors. It's good right? to be friends with your neighbors. Yeah. Mary Dixon and her husband, Tom. Wait. Yeah. It's a Mary and a Tom. It's a Mary and a Tom. And a Mary and a Tom. Correct. Well, well, who was Mary Ann? Who are their other neighbors? Tom and Mary? Tom, <laughs> Tom and Mary. Or Tom, Tom and, and Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> and Mary got the mouse. And the mouse. Jeez. <laughs> it all makes sense now. So Tom and Mary say, oh, poor Mary Ann. You're just... You're... <coughs> okay. And then back in. Yeah, you okay. got it. Um, so... Um, Sorry, I lost my place. I'm sorry. Bop, I had bop, to find bop, out bop. With how to test this cake. I got it. Yeah. You're going to test it and then put it back in for 15 minutes. Okay. Okay? Back to the story. Sorry. So, they have said, come on, um, come on, live with us. Oh, the neighbors did? The neighbors did. Okay. Yeah. That's nice of them. So, Marianne moves in. All right. Um, 11 days after that. Uh-huh. In May, mm -hmm. um, poor Mary Dixon um, died. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, Mary Dixon has now passed on. She's crossed over the rainbow bridge. <laughs> <laughs> She's the house to put. Oh my god! She's done. Yeah, done for. Okay, I'm starting to smell more than a mouse. I'm smelling a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, some is a going on. Yeah. Well. So, uh, the neighbors in this town started to get uh, a little bit suspicious you at think? this point because, you know, we've got the death of the daughter in March, the death of the husband in May, and then the death of a uh, wife in May. In the same May. Oh, in the same area of town. Somebody's working fast. Right. So, the medical examiner decides that he's going to um, look at Mary Dixon's body and what he finds is that there is a lethal amount of two different poisons. Oh! Right. Um, poisons. All right, this needs 18 minutes. I can't remember the names of the poisons. <laughs> Having a blank moment. Well, whatever they were, they were poisonous. They were poisonous. Not, yeah. a good, not a good combination. Not good for people. Okay. So, um, immediately the police say... Marianne and Thomas Dixon have killed this poor woman. Oh, my gosh. And they go and arrest. <gasps> right. So the husband gets arrested, too. Yeah. Yes. Last man standing never looks good for you. No. Mm -mm. Nope. It does not. So Marianne, it turns out, had a really humongous crush on Thomas Dixon. That hussy. I know. Yeah. Um, and she had suspected that her daughter, Elizabeth, knew about it. Right? So she The daughter said, that died. Correct. Uh, so she mo said... Another mother of the year. Right. Right. So, um, Thomas, they can't find any reason why he <laughs> would kill his wife. There's no connection to any other killings. So they eventually let... Thomas Dixon go. But they got some more questions for Marianne. Yeah, think. They decide that they are going to um, dig up Elizabeth, the daughter. Okay. And they're going to dig up Tom. Oh. The husband. The epilepsy Tom. Correct. Okay. So the medical examiner goes <laughs> in and he starts poking around, does some testing, and guess what? Um, they're, they've got that same poison that Mary Dixon had in her. The rat poison. The rat poison. Yeah. Arsenic. Right. Arsenic is in rat poisoning. Right, but there was something else I can't remember. It's I'm fine. Whatever it is, it. it's lethal. It's vermin killer. Vermin killer. And it has killed more than the vermin. It really has. Yes. It seems like the vermin is the one that's killing all the people yeah. with the vermin killer. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, mm. they've now, they've got Marianne under arrest. 
they start asking her questions. She says, okay, I did it. Oh. But it's because I really love Thomas Dixon. Maybe she was confused about which Tom she was married to. Right. I think she just felt like she married the wrong one. I married the wrong Tom. Right. Ooh, what am I going to do? I'm going to kill him. Right. Yeah. So um, she says, all right, well, I killed my daughter because I think she knew that I was in love with Tom Dixon. And that I was going to kill her daddy. And that was not going to work <clears throat> out for me. So I had to kill her. Well, you, well what else can Dur you do? Right. And then, of course, after she was gone... I had to kill my husband because how else was I going to be with Tom Dixon? Because I'm so busy working as a barmaid and a, what else was Factory she? worker. A factory worker that I got to get rid of my husband. So I have a little, I've got like literally an hour between jobs. Right. I can't split my time get between two done. Toms. Got to get it done. I got to have the right Tom at the right time. Exactly. There you go. And then, I mean, duh, <laughs> killing the wife. How else am I going to have my new husband Tom? Oh, I just feel so bad for that woman. Mary Dixon. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for the husband and the daughter, but sure. like. She wasn't even related to that hussy. I know. She, that hussy killed her. She was hospitable enough to invite that woman into her home. Yeah. And say, we're going to take care of you in this dark time. And then... In your hour of need. In yeah. your hour of need, and then you're going to give me said, vermin killer. How about I get you a cup of tea? How about I'll call a tea? A tea. A tea. Should we have tea? Should we have Earl Grey or Jane Grey? <laughs> <laughs> And oh. a biscuit. They always have a biscuit with tea. With a biscuit. Mm -hmm. mm. Which turns out is a cookie. It is indeed a cookie. It's like a cracker cookie. Yeah. So you're confusing yeah. how they, they call things different. But whatever, I'll eat it. Mm -hmm. And they had tea like three times a day. So there was plenty of time to rat poison that girl. Yeah. In her own home. In her own home. But then the police said, hey, we're going to go and see what's at this house that Marianne lived in with her family. Mm -hmm. They go in and they find out <clears throat> there aren't any mice. There are no oh. rats. There's no No wonder evidence. her daughter was suspicious. She brings <laughs> home this big old vat of rat killer and right. there ain't no rats. Right. She's like, Mama, there ain't no mouse in here. There's right. no mouse in our no house. No mouse in the house. And it turns out with that life insurance money that she got, she'd been back to see the chemist quite a few times. Oh, jeez. Right. So she'd gone back and gotten some vermin killer. Gosh. Yeah. She just said, Bad hey, it's use not, of her funds. not working. Inappropriate. I need more. Inappropriation of funding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Misappropriation of funds. That's what it is. Right. So um, she, she actually only got tried for Mary Dixon's murder. I don't really know why that is. I guess because well, I mean, if they felt like they had her dead to rights, like yeah. How many, how many guilties do you need? Right, and back in the 1800s, you know, if you're found guilty, it doesn't. It's not like you're just going to spend the rest of your life in jail. Not like today, no. when you spend, you know, bigger twilight years watching right. TV, exactly, yeah, and writing letters, right, and searching the internet and getting degrees, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the case lasted for two days. There was overwhelming evidence. I would imagine. Um, and when she was in court, she said, I am quite innocent. Oh, I'm quite innocent. When not guilty I'm at all. I'm quite innocent, Governor. I am not guilty at all. All. Oh. Right. Even though they had overwhelming evidence and there were people testifying against her, oh. there were no mouse in her house. No. And she got all these people dead around her. In like two months' time. Yeah. Maybe she should have spaced it out like a year in between. She just was hot for Thomas. Yeah. And listen. Not these hot people, for teacher. The, hot for Thomas. Right. Yeah. These people take care of business. Because you figure this all started in March. That same year, July, she was convicted. Oh, wow. Yeah. They like, work really quick yeah, back we in the got 1800s. You. Listen, lady. We're not we talking got about you. this. You're out. You're out. You're out. We're not. Yes. No. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. So they sentence her to hanging. Oh, yeah. Swinging. Yeah. You're out. I mean, you are out. We're not just going to say you're out, but we're going to put you out. Right. And because <coughs> she killed three people, she was considered a serial killer. Oh, my God. She yeah. was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, they all died in similar ways because that's also one of the characteristics of, of serial, these serial killers. Yeah. So back in the day, 
in the 1800s. You had to sit for three weeks in jail before you were hanged. I guess it's their oh, death like, row. Yeah, that's like torture. Right. Because you so know it's Think coming. about what you've done. <laughs> I don't think they had an appeals court. That right. you got to go to 23,000 times and it, ask people, right. are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. No, they didn't have that. Right. And in that three weeks time, Marianne became a little mentally unstable. Good for her. Yeah. She was overcome with emotion. Well, maybe it was guilt. And then she, chickens came right home to roost. That's right. And she couldn't walk herself to the gallows. Oh. Two female wardens had Please, to. Please, I cannot walk to my I death. I cannot do I it. I shan't walk to my death. I shan't because I'm not guilty. I can't. Just, can I have one more cup of tea? And another three weeks. <laughs> Somebody call the governor. Please. Oh, they didn't even have phones, did they? When was the telephone invented? Ring the governor. <laughs> Please. Send, send the, the governor send the a telegram. Box. Please send the chemist to fetch the governor. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So she gets up to the gallows and she can't, she refuses. I don't know if she can or she then can't. Then she thought, if, she, if I can't stand up, they can't hang me. Exactly. That's what She it is. just collapses. Yeah. So two male wardens oh, step in. Such gentlemen. Yeah. And um, they get the noose around her neck. Oh my gosh. And they're literally ha ha like holding her up. And they coordinate with the executioner. I guess he sends them a signal. Mm -hmm. And when the doors open to drop down, they just let her. They go. just let her go. You know what? And she deserved it. Yeah. 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 Bye so, bye. Um, but it does say in the story that she was gently dropped. Oh, because you she, know why? She was gently Chivalry dropped. Chivalry had not yet died. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Back then, they were still gentlemen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They we will gently to... drop you to your death. That's right. Of hanging. She was the very first woman to be executed um, at this prison in Manchester. Manchester, England. Manchester. That's where um, Kathleen ran off to in my murder, so I'm not going there. Yeah, Strike Manchester that one off is my definitely list. off. Yeah. Lord have mercy. And I it can't was see a reason to go. Such a big deal that the executioner wrote a book. When he retired, he wrote a book and he talked about the execution of Mary Ann Britland. So she at least did one thing good in her death. She made somebody else famous for. She did. <laughs> she did. Way to go, Mary Ann. Yeah. Way to so depart this life on a high Short and sweet, I know, but still. It was still a good one. Really messed up. Yeah, because, I mean, back then, it's not like you just got in your car and ran around the corner to the Target and ran in to get some rat poison and ran home. Right. Like, when you go to the chemist, I'm sure you have to walk into town. You've got to walk into town. And they didn't have tennis shoes back then. Women wore those Victorian pointy shoes with right. the lace up and all the corsets and the things hanging off of them. That's not easy just to walk to town to the chemist. Walk back. You've got to carry your own rat poisoning because there is no car to load it into. Right. I'm not sure. I mean, I think this was hard work. She had to put hard work into this. Hard work. But then once she got there and her daughter said, Mama... Why you got vermin killer? There ain't no mouse in our house. Right. And she was like, well, let me serve you a cup of tea and I'll tell you about it. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah. Let's have this cup of tea. Mm. Right. Gosh. That's why you make your own tea. Women? Make your own tea. Make your own tea. Don't let other people make drinks for you. It's the way, it's like roofy now, but back then it was vermin killer in the tea. Right. Don't ever lose Don't sight of your own drink. Don't it's do it. It's got to be your own. It has to be. Oh, well, that was a good murder, though, Shogun. Thank you. And I'm glad that all this happened over in the UK because that must mean that we don't have any murders here in the United States. This is a perfect place okay. to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of right, nice well, to take a what? break. Is that cake coming out of the oven? It is. It's coming out right now. That's really so. good news. Oh, my God. It just smells so good. It smells so it good. It does smell good. Mm. It's the best. This is just the easiest cake. It's. It's great if you want to take it, you know, for a holiday party or whatever, because you just throw everything together. It's not like you do the wet ingredients, the dry ingredients. It just, everything goes in a bowl. You mix it up. I use my KitchenAid because I'm lazy. And <laughs> that's not lazy. You have to get that KitchenAid off the top of your fridge. It's true. Every it single time. It is a time, lot of work. It is a lot of work So for don't me. cut yourself short. I shan't. I shan't. I shan't. I shan't. Mm -mm. Um, so anyway. Let's get a slice of it and see how it tastes. All right, hold on. Can you get it? 
You having a hard time? No, I'm good. I'm good. Just, I'm just flip gonna... it right out. Yeah. You got this. Oh, we're gonna... we'll play. It's real hot though, sugar. So let me just let me just get this. <laughs> it's real hot. Be careful. I will. Right. Oh God, that looks delicious. It's amazing. All right, here you go. It looks so good. Mm, Y'all have no hot. idea. Hold on. All right, well, we're not going to chew mm. in your faces, but I got to tell you. That is delicious. This is absolutely yummy. Y'all got to try this. Hey, if you want this recipe, you can email us at murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com or visit our webpage, which is, I don't remember the webpage. Yes, you do. Is it sugarcoated? Murder. Sugarcoatedmurder.com. Sounds good to me. Well, that's so easy. I'm so glad we have that simple name. Me too. And we also have a Facebook group, and you can join our Facebook group. Please do, because we need a lot of people to talk about murder to when we're not talking about murder on this. And, and also we feel we'll a little have... weird when we're just talking to each other on Facebook, because that's weird. It's lonely. It's lonely. So um, anyway, let us know if you want the recipe. We will share it with you. and We'll put um, a picture up on our, on our page, too. Yes, on our Facebook page and on our website, there'll be a picture of it, and you all stay Stay sweet. Thank you for listening. Y'all have a great week. Bye now. Bye. For listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B L E A V on YouTube.